Hello, my name is Mr. Fontenot. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Mr. Fontenot 1111. Please like, share, and subscribe. In this video, I'll be finding the AC values from the Chapter 15 Math Handout, problem number 21. So here we see that we have a basic combination circuit, and I've plugged in my known values from the Chapter 15 Math Handout. So my first goal is to find RT. I take a look at the circuit here and I can determine which resistors are in series and which ones are in parallel by the current flow. So through R3 here, there is only one pathway for current to flow through. That tells me that R3 is in series with the voltage source. As I continue to follow the current, I see that the current can split at this point right here and through R1 and R2, there is more than one pathway to current for current to flow through. So that tells me that the R1 and R2 are in parallel. So I will take R1 and R2 and run them through the reciprocal formula, giving me a value of 200 ohms. I'm going to bring the value of R3 just straight over. So that gives me 200 ohms in series with 1K ohm. Now I can add these two together to get my RT of 1.2K ohms. Now I have 2 out of 3 for IT, so I can find IT by taking the VT divided by the RT, and that gives me an IT of 20 milliamps. Since R3 is on the main branch and there's only one pathway for current to flow through here, this tells me that I3 is also going to be 20 milliamps. Now I can solve for V3 by taking I3 times R3, finding the V3 value of 20 volts. V1 and V2 will both be the same amount of voltage but we first must take the 20 volts out of the 24 volts because V1 and V2 cannot both receive the full 24 volts since we've already dropped 20 volts here at V3. So that tells us that V1 and V2 are both four volts. By applying this equation here, V1 is equal to V2, which is equal to the VT minus V3. Now I can find I1 by taking V1 divided by R1, giving me 13.33 milliamps. I can find I2 by taking the V2 divided by R2, and that gives me 6.67 milliamps. All right, now to find my AC values I'm asked for up here, so V1 RMS, well, all of these volts and all of these currents are already in RMS, so V1 RMS would just be the four volts listed here. Now I need IT peak to peak. I have an IT RMS of 20 milliamps, so the first thing I'm gonna do is use this formula to find the IT peak. So I take my 20 milliamps. I'm not gonna put the milli in because I know my answer is gonna be in milli. Times 1.414 equals 28.28. .28. That is my IT peak. If I want peak to peak, I have to take the peak times two. So I take this peak value times two equals 56.56 milliamps. Now I need my I2 peak. 
Here I have my I2 RMS of 6.67. Take that times 1.414 and that gives me my I2 peak. Nine point four three milliamps. Okay, I want to go back through my steps one more time. The first thing I did was redraw my circuit, understanding that R1 and R2 were in parallel, giving me the 200 ohms. I brought the R3 value straight over, 1K. So now I have 1K in series with 200. This gives me 1.2K ohms for my total resistance. That was my first step. My next step, I can find IT by taking VT divided by RT. Tells me 20 milliamps. And I understand that since R3 is on the main branch and all the current must flow through R3, that I3 will also be 20 milliamps. Now I can use, all right, so we figured this out. IT and I3 were the same. Now I can find V3 by using Ohm's law. I3 times R3 gives me my V3 value of 20 volts. And then next I understood that V1 and V2 will be the same value but I use this equation to find that value by taking my VT minus V3, and this gives me V1 and V2. All right, now I can use Ohm's law to find I1, V1 divided by R1. And I can find I2 using Ohm's law, V2 divided by R2. Then I applied the appropriate AC formula to find the AC values requested. 